Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set Duelist Alliance Set Release Date August 14th, 2014 Introduction Burning Abyss Teller Knight Shadol Super Heavy Samurai Performer Pal Melodious Deskbot and Yang Zing. Right. So 2014 is a special year in Yu-Gi-Oh! As this was the year that introduced the best TCG deck of all time, which is Burning Abyss. And I would also say the best archetype of all time, which again is Burning Abyss. Now, why does Burning Abyss have this title as the best TCG deck and as the best archetype and best deck of all time in Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, simply because it's had a dominance from 2014 until 2020. Yes, you heard that right. For six years, Burning Abyss has been in the competitive scene, whether it's been a top, whether in Rogue or in high competitive play, Burning Abyss and Burning Abyss cards have been in the competitive scene. It has not left the game. Even now, to this day, Cherubini is still part of a deck somewhere. It's just that good. But, anyways, I digress. This is why Burning Abyss has this title and why it, I consider it the best deck of all time in Yu-Gi-Oh! Pretty much. That's all I've got to say. Let's move on. Value card, Ghost, Stellar Knight, Deltarus. Indeed, at this time, we had the Ghost card, Stellar Knight, Deltarus in the, in the pack. Yes, Ghosts were still being printed in packs at this time still. And I was lucky enough, because this was the booster set, that I pulled Ghost, uh, Stellar Knight, Deltarus. It was this set. Duelist Alliance is a very special set. For me, it's a special place in my heart, as this was the set that I managed to pull a ghost from this set. And yeah, pretty much it's, it's, that's pretty, pretty much it. Let's move on and we go to legacy support. We have Monarch, Artifact, Battle Guard, the White Series, Numbers, Number, and Gin of Rituals. Our wild card is Castell, the Sky Blaster. Masketeer. Indeed, it premiered in this, uh, Castell premiered in this set, and it was a fantastic wild card, fantastic extra deck monster, as this is, was this a great card for just clearing face-ups, uh, face-ups, spell or traps, that were just problematic in the game, as we didn't have, I don't believe at this time we had Twin Twister, so I still, I believe Twin Twister might have been released in a set after this, or well, yeah, after. Anyways, Castell, even if it wasn't released, Castell still was a really good card because still back removal, there wasn't a lot of it in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2014 at this time, especially on monsters. Um, our back removal was severely lacking. We only had Mystical Space Typhoon and I think Tornado. Uh, not the normal trap because that didn't get released, I don't believe. Just the spell, which was severely really lacking and yeah just our back removal in Yu-Gi-Oh was just severely lacking at this point and so Castell just found itself being a staple as it could just clear face up spell or traps it could just clear face up uh, uh monsters as well just being able to just shuffle cards into the deck whatever you got to remember this was targeting bouncing um which was very powerful at the time as we didn't have, as there was no other card in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point in time that could shuffle cards away. Most did target, most cards destroyed cards. Or, on the rare occasion, banished them. But shuffling a card from the, from the, from the field into the deck was just unheard of. And was very rare you'd see on cards. Which is why it was the best wild card of this time. Okay, and so we grade the set as A. As for amazingly beautiful. Moving on, 
A, meaning this was a really good set for the time. This premiered, this was the set that premiered the whole pendulum mechanic. But for my pal premiered in this set, um, loads of, we had our first new type introduced, which was Worm, i.e. being Yang Zing. So we had a new type added into the game, which was Yang Zing. Again, very historic Yang Zing has gone to do great, went on to do great things. Um, we premiered the best deck of all time, which is Burning Abyss, with a six-year dominance. And I don't believe any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! will have this kind of dominance ever again. No. No deck will have this dominance. I don't believe Sky Striker have this dominance of six years. Sky Strikers only have from 2018 until 2022. Pretty much. Yeah, I don't believe I don't believe they have six years. But Burning Abyss has the longest lineup for staying power. And it still is. I believe Burning Abyss can enter the competitive scene again. I make no mistake. Perhaps you, we could see it be paired up with the new Goblin archetype that came out recently in the maze set or beginning of this year. So do not... In, Fan in Phantom Nightmare, again, Phantom Nightmare came out recently and Goblins, the Goblin archetype, you know, uh, premiered there as well. The Goblin cards were just, re re you know, remade into a, a, you know, a Goblin archetype. So do not count Burning Abyss dead just yet, as that is an archetype that can spurn out uh, rank, th uh, you know, rank threes quite easily. And Burning Abyss could find its home right there. So Dante isn't out. And he's ready to tear things up again and co continue his reign of dominance. And that's pretty much it, really. So tune in next time as I'll talk about more historic sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! And we'll cover, I think, in the next video, a historic set which made some moves in Yu-Gi-Oh! And also introduced to us the basics. And the things in Yu-Gi-Oh! today that we take for granted, but this was a set that introduced a lot of things that now are what make Yu-Gi-Oh! special. See you then! We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.